Now I know this doesn't look like much, but this was actually one of the main combat uniforms worn by American troops during the Second World War. This is the herringbone twill field jacket. Now before we take a closer look at some of the details, let's talk a little bit about the history and development of this jacket. Now it was introduced in 1941 as a replacement for two earlier uniforms. It was intended for use as both a combat and fatigue or work uniform. Now, it was one of several uniforms issued for combat use, mainly in summer months or tropical climates. It could also be layered when temperatures became colder, or when soldiers just wanted to have multiple layers as protection against the elements. Now, even though this was an army-produced and issued uniform, examples also made their way to the Marine Corps, and plenty of them wore it as well. Now, you're probably wondering, on this example, there is a stain towards the bottom of it. I got this uniform for free, actually, and that is either grease or rust, I believe, and it will not come out, but it was free, so I'm not going to complain too much. The first pattern of this jacket was introduced in 1941, but it was found to be overcomplicated to produce. It had a lot of little small details like pleating on the pockets and just stuff like that that kind of slowed down the production. And you have to remember, of course, that they needed as many of these jackets as possible, so little things like this really did matter in the long run. So later on, in 1942, the second pattern was introduced, and it did away with a lot of these little details that didn't really matter. Now one of the main outward differences between the first and second pattern jackets are the much, much larger front pockets on the second pattern, and I'll put up a picture to kind of show you the differences between the two. Now, the second pattern jacket was the jacket that was produced and used up until the end of the war, and it was continually modified along the way, with the first major modification being the introduction of some kind of protective mechanisms on it to help protect soldiers from gas. Now, the most uh, major of these was the gas flap on the inside of the jacket, but there's a couple others which I'll show you when we take a closer look in a minute. Now, the final version was basically simply a color change. They didn't really do anything else to it other than change the shading of the herringbone tool fabric itself. They went from this lighter color, which my example's in, to a much darker olive drab number seven. And they did this because they found that given the environment soldiers were fighting in, this lighter jacket almost made them stand out more than it camouflaged them, and a darker shade would be much more appropriate. So if we start at the top of the jacket, you can see where the manufacturer's label would have been. And that would have just had stuff like contract numbers and date of production, as well as who actually made it. Now if we move down on the jacket, you can see the classic 13 star buttons. And if you'll give me a moment, I'll get it open and we can take a look at that gas flap. So here we have the gas flap, and I hope you can tell through the camera, but this is a separate piece of fabric from these two front parts right here and here. And this would have been secured using these buttons here, so you've got two at the top, as well as one all the way down on the bottom, and this flap does run all the way to the bottom of the jacket. If you peel back this part here, you can see where it terminates at the end right there. And like I said, this would mainly have been as a protection against blister agents, so it just kind of made these chemicals have a harder time getting through to your skin. And there were several other measures on this jacket, like if we look at the cuffs, you can see this button as well as two buttonholes, one right here and one right here, just to make it to where you could get a really good tight seal against your wrist. Now the final piece of gas protection equipment on it is simply these two buttons behind the collar, and those would have just been for attaching a hood. So you'd have your gas mask on, and then you could pull that hood over the top of it just to help protect your neck and the rest of your head. Now, we finished looking at the jacket, but I still would like to show you some examples of these in use during World War II from period photographs, and maybe point out a thing or two. So here's our first photograph we're gonna look at, and this is, I believe, taken at Fort Knox. It's a staged press photograph. And you can see that the soldier in the picture is wearing a first pattern jacket. You can tell this by the pockets, which you can see under his arm, as well as the uh, cuffs on his sleeve. Now here's another picture, and this one is actually from the Normandy landings. And the most interesting thing about this is, if you look in this area, which I will have circled, you can see that he's layering his jacket, so he's got another kind of shirt underneath it. So this gives you an idea kind of how these were actually worn in the field. Here's the final photo we're going to look at, and this is again a D-Day picture, 
But one of the interesting things about this is you can see that the two shades were worn at the same time in certain occasions. So you can see some soldiers over here on the right wearing the darker uh, pattern two jackets, and then this guy over here on the left wearing the lighter pattern twos. Something else interesting, look at this guy uh, climbing down on the rope ladder. He's got a assault gas mask bag on to keep it waterproof during the landing. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see some more videos on Militaria almost every week, please consider subscribing. Thank you.